the circumcision. We worship God in spirit. Not in the flesh. To be bringing sounds from heaven. And yet we are bringing those sounds in the gyration of demonic spirits. Hallelujah. God is good. We may be seated. I believe beyond any shadow of doubt that the presence of God is here. And there are many things that the Lord is going to be saying to us um, in line with where I believe that he's taking us as a ministry. So I want us to just take the next few seconds and just let's bow our heads as we say a simple word of prayer. And it's really a very simple prayer. God, this phase of my life, show me what you will have me do. And give me the strength to be obedient. Lord, at this phase of your dealings in my life, tell me what is most important and I will obey. Show me where I have been falling short and strengthen me that I be found obedient to your will. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Go ahead and talk to God. Go ahead and talk to God. The many destinies that are going to be realigned today, truly. Much needed counsel is going to come today. Much confusion is going to be taken from you because of what you are doing right now. The counsel of the Lord will be made known. The strength of the Lord will be released. Limitations will be pulled out of the way because the Lord is strengthening his church. And days of glory are upon us again. And lo, I come in the volume of the books as it is written of me, O God, to do thy will. And so, Lord, we begin this meeting consecrating our hearts to you. Come do what only you can do, Lord. Come set us again on the path that you have prepared for us. And we are thankful because we know you hear us always. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, I would have loved us to take a few songs and just fellowship, but my time is short. Praise God. Uh, there's, there's a song that Reverend Kess sang the last time he was in church. Uh, to the mountain of fire. That, that has been our song. Hmm? If we sing it now, that might take another 30 minutes. So maybe if there's time when I'm done... You know, to just enjoy God's presence. Hallelujah. Uh, RCN Worry is a blessed, blessed ministry. Did you hear what I just said? Uh, Worry, blessed people. And I am I'm thankful to God for the privilege to be able to partner with such a ministry and, and to partner with my brother here and his wife. Uh, and I want to say that the Lord is doing great things in this place. Hallelujah. And 2024 is going to be a very, very fulfilling year. Uh, everything that has been left hanging for years, this year God is going to bring a multiplication. And there's going to be a, a speeding up of the process. Uh, I believe helpers from far and near are being raised right now. And, and everything you desire, I'm going to say it come to pass. In the name of Jesus. 
Interestingly, I saw myself as it were standing on a high mountain. And one of the things the Lord said to me is going to give me sight from a, from, from a pedestal higher than I've ever experienced before. Because there are things that God is going to be speaking to RCN today. Hallelujah. And when the Lord said me, I was excited. I had an opportunity to come and be a blessing to my brother. Because I've been so concerned that he, I, he needs strength. Eh? Amen. Uh, he's been so busy. But today the Lord is going to release strength. And not just strength, much needed counsel and discernment. Uh, we're going to enter into a dimension of ministry like, like scripture says in John chapter 5. And I want us to begin from there. In the ministry of Jesus, John chapter 5 from verse 17, this is what he said. That the Father walketh hitherto, and I walk. It's a very interesting statement Jesus made. And what I was trying to say there is that this work that we're about, it's, it's the Father that is doing. All I'm simply doing, I'm just reproducing what the Father is doing. Praise God. And then he goes on to tell us, I, I think in verse, verse 19, that the Father loveth the Son, and we show him all things that he doeth. Are you seeing it? And he says, you have not seen anything yet. Let, let, let me get to it very quickly. And Jesus answered and I say, Verily I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, this also doeth the Son likewise. For the Father loves the Son, verse 20, and shows him all things that he himself do, and will show him greater works than these, that ye may marvel. Praise God. I believe the Lord will bring ease to the work in this place. And the revelation of the Spirit will be made very clear. And you will see, even as the Lord will have you see. And your hands will be strengthened to labor. Hallelujah. Who will God send? I believe that that's the theme for this meeting. And I've been told to specifically narrow down to, you know, uh, living to serve the will of God. And so we're going to examine a number of things from Scripture that I, I believe will will help us come to a better appreciation of God's will. Because the man that God is going to use, it has to be the man who is willing to go. Amen. Don't you think so? Uh, God cannot take you where you don't want to. God cannot bring you to a place where you don't want. There are dimensions in ministry that are lost today because we have a large number of Christians who are unwilling they want to do as they desire, not as the Lord has commanded. And you see, you can't walk with God that way. Jesus tells us in plain terms, he says, this is how I, I did ministry. I didn't come to do my will. John chapter 5 verse 31. Maybe we'll just see it. John chapter 5, sorry, verse 30. It says, I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is just. It says, because I seek, what? Not my own will. But what? The will of the Father that sent me. The Amplifier says, I do not take counsel from my own will. In other words, I do not have a meeting with myself. I say, it's the one that I want that I will do. But I'm careful to do the will of the Father. If there's anything that I believe that has stood in the way of the work of the Lord in this generation, I believe that this is it. What God wants for you is not what you want for yourself. Where God wants to take you is, is, not, what, is not where you want to go. A lot of what we see in ministry today is like it unto the ministry of King Saul. Go, destroy all the Amalekites. Put an end to all, animal, human, and, air, and everything. And then he comes back, and here comes Samuel, hearing the bleating of sheep and, and, and seeing that he had not obeyed God. And as far as he was concerned, he had obeyed God. Are you following this? He said, I did it. I said, no. For obedience is better than sacrifice. And the rebellion that I've seen is likened onto witchcraft. And we're going to understand how all that plays, you know, very shortly. But there is a call for us in this generation. Two things. 
not just to do the will of God, but to begin to delight in the will of God. And delighting means that we come to a place where we can say like Jesus, my meat is to do his will. We get to a point where we can boldly declare that this is all that I live for. There is no other thing that wakes me up in the morning but to see the will of the Father. And in case you do not know, there are still Christians like that in this day. And God is yet raising much more. But that is the realm of Christianity that is needed in this generation. I'll say that again. The sad and greatest limitation in the work of God in this day is that what God wants to do, where God wants to take us, many Christians are not willing to go. Are we still here? But it's my prayer that that will change by the time we are done today. Praise God. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 13. Let's lay this foundation. Chapter 5, verse 15, rather. Let's lay this foundation. This is the very first building block on this journey today. And Paul is careful to tell us here the exact reason for which Jesus died. I will follow in this. It says, and that he died for all that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him who died for them and rose again. If you have the Living Bible, I like the way the Living, the living Bible puts it in very clear terms. Right? It says that Jesus died so that you don't live unto yourself, but unto him. Look, see how the Living Bible puts it. It says, it died for all so that all who live, having received eternal life from him, might live no longer for themselves, to please themselves, but to spend their lives pleasing Christ who died and rose again for them. Praise God. Are we still here? The very reason for which the Lord died, it says, is so that you live to please him. The word please there is the word telema. And it's the same word from which you get the word the will of God. The will of God simply describes the pleasure of God. And so when scripture says that Jesus died for you so that you live to please him or you live, it's simply telling you that the whole essence of the death of Jesus Christ was with one thing in mind, that a generation of men will be raised that will live with only one agenda, and that is to do the will of God. All following this? It is my earnest prayer that the reason for which Jesus died will not be lost in this generation. Amen. That men will rise with this passion to tell themselves that he did not die in vain in my life. If all that was driving Jesus to the cross is that men will also come in the same spirit with which he lived, then I choose to be that one that will be numbered amongst men who live on the earth today with just one agenda to do the will of God. Praise God. Are we still here? I was sharing with the brethren in church today, interestingly, and I was sharing with them my experience when I was on campus. I'll never forget, 300 level. I got into school with a burden to do, to do the work of God. I knew that God had, had, had called me to do ministry, and I knew that campus ministry was going to be my Bible school. I didn't go to Bible school. I know Reverend Kess went to Bible school. Did you go to Bible school? Let me be sure. Eh? So, you went to Bible school. Eh? It's good. I'm not saying it's bad. Nobody should miss God. But I lived with the revelation of men that God raised simply by their experiences on campus. Are you following this? And quite a number of men like that who did fantastic ministry on campus. And that was their Bible school. So before I got to campus, I had that same burden that God, ah, when I get there, uh, let, let me have enough experiences that will also be my Bible school. So there was a burden. However, doing the work of the Lord was not that easy. And I had two experiences that I'm going to share with you, right? As, as, we, as we make progress, I believe that you will come to a better appreciation of why this is so important to us in this day. And I will never forget, my first experience began with a book that I read. It was titled, I can't remember now, but something on obedience. 
And this particular minister began to share his, part, his experience, how that he got to a phase in his ministry where nothing was working. So he, he decided to settle down and pray. And what was his prayer? He said, God, uh, I've gotten to the end of my, of my own will. Now, oh God, show me what you will have me do, and I will obey. As I read and saw the testimonies that followed after suit, I'll never forget one thing he said. He said after that experience, he found such a love and delight in the will of God like he had never known before. And I told myself, are, are you serious? I said, okay, let me do the same. So I began to pray earnestly. Okay, God, show me what you will have me do, and I will obey. I noticed that the first time I prayed that prayer, my mind already began to calculate some of the things I know God will tell me to do. Are you following this? That I know I will not obey. So I knew I was not ready. <laughs> Are we following this? We are going somewhere today. Our theme for us as a church this year, we've been speaking on provoking a strong church. And we use that word provoke intentionally. Using the story of Hannah, Scripture says that Penina, if you study 1 Samuel chapter 1, Penina played a major role in the birthing of Samuel. Do you know that? There is a realm a person will not get to if you do not have a Penina behind you. So some of those jokers are actually working for your good. Praise God. Hmm? Like the one you mentioned today. They are acting like Penina. But they are going to be tools that will be instrumental in bringing you to where God has planned for you. Are we still here? And you see, Hannah prayed a prayer different from the prayer she had been praying before. She had always wanted a child and she had always prayed. But it got to a point where the troubling of Penina, Scripture says Penina provoked her to a point where her prayers entered a new dimension. Now it was something has to happen. I cannot continue to live with this shame. And not just that, it provoked her to a place of consecration. It was at that point that God knew that you are ready for the next level. Is somebody still here? What did she say? How do I know that? She said to herself, okay, God, this child, I'm ready to come to that place of consecration where as he comes, he belongs to you. That is the man who has come to understand that the will of God is what we're living for. And so as I persisted for a while, enjoying, in quotes, my pleasure, we're going to understand some very interesting things shortly. Many things that the Lord began to say to me, and I will say to us, you know, step by step. And one of the things he said, number one, you are not truly free until you are free to do the will of God. There are many Christians who are in bondage seated here today and have no idea that they are in bondage. We assume that salvation is, I am now free. I cannot do as I please. No, 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 no. You are saved with one intention. Freedom to do his will. Every time there is a contention in your spirit, when it comes to the will of God, it's a clear indication that there are still some traces of bondage in your life that you have not dealt with. Did you hear what I just said? True freedom in Christ is freedom to do his will. If ever the will of God is presented and there's some contention, there's some resistance, it means there's something that is working there that is not consistent with God's will. It's a system of rebellion and it's one of the tools that the devil is using against the church today. It's called witchcraft. Galatians chapter, please permit me, I have so much to say. So I hope you are still with me. Right? Uh -huh. Because I'm just going to be giving you the scriptures as, as the Holy Spirit helps me. Galatians chapter 3 verse 1. Notice how Paul began his, his conversation with the Galatian church. He says, who has bewitched you, O foolish Galatians? Having begun in the spirit, are you now made perfect in the flesh? What was he trying to tell them? When you began this journey, there was a steady walk in the spirit. There was a delight in the will of God. Now you have gotten to a point where it's your own thing that you are now doing. You, you have forgotten the way of freedom and you are now pursuing the way of bondage. And the Lord said to me, there's witchcraft in the church. 
And the goal of witchcraft, like what happened to Saul, is to awaken rebellion, to make you not want what God wants for you. It's the same thing that happened to the children of Israel. It's rebellion. They got to the promised land, saw how exciting and wonderful the place was, saw the giants and said, we don't want again. <laughs> is somebody still here? Come, is it not what God has planned for you? If I say I don't want again, don't you think that should be okay? After all, God has said, okay, I want to give you. It's me that I say, okay, I don't want again. Should I that end the story? I go home and God will go home. Talk to me. But God has so gotten these people to a point where he had to make them understand that it is rebellion not to want for yourself what I want for you. I hope somebody gets this today. It is deep rebellion for God to show you a field and say, go. And you say, no, I don't want. Is it not my choice? This generation has lost the revelation of servanthood. Men of old, the Apostle Paul, I was reading through Romans chapter 1, Philippians chapter 1, Revelation chapter 1, John the servant of God, Paul the servant. You see, every man that walked with Jesus understood servanthood. That we are but his servants. And there are two things about servants. Number one, a servant has no will of his own. Check it. Any house that there is a house made or house helper, check it. They are employed with one agenda in mind. Not to do what they want. Are you following this? But to do what they are told to do. Whether it's 3 a.m. In the, in, in, the, in, in, the, in the morning. They are employed with one agenda. Not your will. Not what you want. And secondly, they are employed for just one reason. To do the will of the Father. A servant has no agenda of his own. No plan of his own. He lives simply for the agenda of the master. So every day when the servant wakes up, he goes to the master with only one question. What would you have me do today? Are you following this? And Jesus is careful to tell us that this is my meat. We are going somewhere today. That this thing that seems hard and seems difficult, the master tells us that this is what gives him the greatest delight, the greatest satisfaction, the greatest fulfillment. That means there's a revelation about God's will that we need to have today so that we too will delight in this will. Are you following this? It is rebellion not to want for yourself what God wants for you. It's the spirit of witchcraft that makes us not want what God wants. The default setting of a believer, according to its salvation, is that from the day you give your life to Christ, there should be a longing to please the master. When we got saved, it, 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 the concept of follow-up is completely strange, you know, to me, as far as, as far as I'm concerned. That why will a person get born again and you have to go and follow him up? Did he truly meet with the Lord is the question to ask. Because growing up as a believer, when we got saved, that, that encounter automatically puts an end to your way, old way of life. We were the ones pursuing God. We are the ones pursuing. Pastor will not come and follow us up. We will call, for, go to his house with Bible, with writing pad, with questions. What happened to that generation of believers? That's what we're going to today. Because that should be the normal setting. It says he, he died with this in mind. That, that, that those who, who are born from him will live not to please themselves. But to please him. And for the first time I sat down and realized that I've been living in bondage. Contrary to the design of God. The design of God is that I should be free to do his will. I should delight in his will. Are we still here? Yes, Have you ever seen a mother give birth to a child? Breastfeeding the child. No, 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 before that. And there's a law, I gather, that says that if a, a, a nursing mother does not breastfeed the child, you know, it's, it's, I don't know about Nigeria, but in foreign countries, it, it's, it's a big deal, right? Uh, you, you could be penalized for that. So I know that there's no mother here who woke up at 3 a.m. 
and picked up the child and said, I beg, come home, they don't carry me go to prison. Are you following this? And started breastfeeding the child. Is there any nursing mom? In fact, most of our women, as far as I'm concerned, don't even know that there's such a law. Do you know what wakes them up at that time of the night? Are you following this? When they hear the cry of the baby and it's not convenient, are you following this? But they go and pick up that baby to breastfeed and live through some strenuous experiences for that first few months. Not sleeping enough, not, but they stay consistent. Praise God. I, I think we need to clap for our, our mothers in the house. Hmm? They, they have done well. There's something that drives them. There's a connection between them and the child. There's a connection between you and your destiny. The cry of your destiny is getting louder now in the spirit. Like that baby crying. That's, so, that's the destiny of men in this place and women. Crying out. Hoping that you will wake up. And reconnect with it. Because that's the end to which your life was appointed. Are you following this? You can't know rest until you connect with the reason for which you were born. That's why Jesus said that you say, this is my meat. You don't understand. You don't understand. The only essence, only reason why I'm here is this. So to keep me from it, you are actually destroying me. Because the reason for which I came is what gives me the greatest fulfillment. In the same vein, there's a reason for which God has brought you to RCN today. There's a reason for which you are in worry at a time as this. There is a destiny that is crying out for fulfillment. And God is looking for men who will say to themselves, not my will, but the will of the Father. Praise God. Are we still together? The true liberty that we spoke about, Ecclesiastes chapter 36, let's just see one scripture and then we'll go somewhere. As the Lord began to deal with me, Ezekiel chapter 36 and verse, from verse 25 to 27. But let, let's just see verse 27 so that we don't spend so much time. Hope I still have people with me today. All right. So Ezekiel 36, that's what I said, right? Okay. Let me just see verse 26 and 27. It says, a new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, that is the rebellious tendencies in you. And what did God say you will do? He will give you a heart of flesh. Verse 27 is the part I want you to see. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. And you shall keep my judgments and do them. Notice, this is a very simple way of explaining the covenant that we have with God. It says, God says by himself, that system of rebellion that once troubled you as a non-believer, he takes it away, calls it a stony heart. And then he gives you a heart of flesh, a heart that loves to obey God, a heart that wants to do the will of God, a heart that longs to please God. And then he further tells us how this is going to be affected. He says he will put his spirit in you. And his spirit will cause you to do his will. Are we still here? One of the works of the Holy Spirit in the life of every believer is to bring you to a point where you delight in the will of God. Are you following this? Where you are equipped with ability to do the will of God. Second scripture, Philippians chapter 3, sorry, chapter 2 and verse 13. What does it say? For it is God that works. Hmm? Are you there? It says God that does what? Philippians 2, 13. That worketh in you, but to will and to do of his good pleasure. Do you have good news? Good news Bible. Let's, let's see how the good news puts it. 
Go to say, because God is always at work in you to make you willing and to make you able to obey his own purpose. In other words, there's such a work of the Holy Spirit in the life of every believer. To bring it to a point where you delight in the will of God. Where you're excited about the will of God. Where you can't wait to do. Where, where, where his will becomes your meat. We are ready to sacrifice whatever it takes. Because that's what God has said. Praise God. Are we still here? There's such a place. And so the Lord had to start working in me. Because I understood that where God is taking me to now, I must surrender. Are you following this? I must come to that place where I can know true liberty. If the spirit of God is in me, then it says, God says by his spirit, he will cause me to do. But the willingness was not there. The ability didn't seem to be there. Because as we're going to discover, there's a connection between willingness and ability. Once you start being willing, you know, there's a natural flow of divine ability. That's what scripture says, in the day of his power. What did he say? The people will be willing. There's a connection between willingness and the abilities of God. And so I began to press. Huh? And the revelations of God began to increase. There are three basic things that God had to deal with in my life. And those are the three things that we're going to address very quickly now. To come to that point. I knew what God wanted from me. There was a, a campus evangelist that God was wanted to raise. Ha! Huh. And after that, when the Lord was done, oh goodness, what a move of the Spirit. What a move of the Spirit. We saw cult members get saved. We saw heads of cults get saved. Are you following this? And all that was just going on in my life, I said, Kai, all this would have been lost. Notice, before I got to campus, I, 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 I told God, God, use me. But I got there. Hmm? And I realized that it's not that easy. There are certain things God had to put in place. Three basic things God addressed in my life. The first is an understanding of your identity. You must know who you are. One of the most powerful words in the Bible is from Romans chapter 6. I think verse 11. It's the word reckon. We're going to come to it shortly, but just stay with me. The knowledge of your identity in Christ. You must know who you are. You must understand what you carry. You must recognize the abilities of God that work in you. Why is this important? Let me give you, give you a simple illustration from Genesis. How systems of rebellion are established. Adam and Eve had been created by God and they were in the garden, enjoying the beautiful garden. One day, a serpent shows up. And we know the story. It was actually the devil having a conversation with Eve. And it was a very interesting conversation. What was the conversation about? Uh -huh, Eve, come. That fruit over there, I heard that God says you push, you know, eat it. Is it true? And Eve said, yeah. God said we should, not, we should not eat it. We should not even touch it. Because the day we eat it, we will die. Are you following this? So it was a, a simple thing. That was God's will. That was God's standpoint, as it were. That in this matter, that fruit, no go area. So Eve knew. And the devil wanted to establish a system of rebellion. So this is what he did. He looked at Eve and he told Eve, Eve, forget it. You, you, don't, you don't understand. The day you eat this fruit, you become wise. In fact, you become like God. Are you following this? What was basically presented to Eve at that point in time is, oh girl, you be fool. Did you hear what I just said? Because for her to look at herself and for my evaluation, tell herself, Kai, that means if I eat this fruit, I will not get sense. That means according to her evaluation of herself, I not get sense. <laughs> Are we still here? And I will not be like God. That means according to how she evaluated herself, I'm not like God. So let me ask this question. Was she already like God? Was she already wise? Fine. And the Lord said to me, the devil can never make you eat grass without first convincing you that you are a goat. 
If you lack an understanding of yourself, you will settle for that which is not God's will. And you won't realize that it's because you don't know who you are. Did you hear what I just said? There are many people who are running from, from, from that call of God. You see, I, I studied a lot about, I'm sure, like Reverend Kess, I studied revivalists. I, I read men's stories. You see, husband and wife, they just graduated from university in America, UK. And as they are graduating from university or Bible school, they are excitedly packing their load. They just got married. They are not thinking of honeymoon. Where are you people going to for honeymoon? Say, no, 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 we're going to China. That's where God sent us. No, we're going to India. That, that, that's... I said, ah, so why did you waste all this time reading and China? I said, no, 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 no. The, the skill we've acquired, we'll use it there. <laughs> are you following this? The knowledge we have, we'll, it, it will help us when we get there. A number of those people died. Are you following this? Either in the course of going or why they got there. By strange sicknesses, diseases, or some were persecuted and killed because of the opposition to the gospel. And the news of their death will come back to town. Are you following this? And as people are hearing they have died, another set of husband and wife are getting ready to say, let's go and replace them. Are we still here? There is a number of Christians that are living like goats, permit me to say, is because that's how the devil has made them see themselves. We are God's ambassadors. Are you following this? When you understand that you are God's man for the hour, when you recognize that you are set apart, men cried out for a savior. God custom built you and released you to them. Are you following this? Yes, a number of us seated here are the answer to the prayers of men. People far and near that you have never seen and might never see, but your intercessions are touching them. Are you following this? Some of you will be sent physically to go there. And God designed that they are only, the only way this world will see light is you. You are too important to be living like a goat. Are you following this? You need to know who you are. It was said, I can't remember which of this uh, missionaries, that when the king of England, for example, sends men to represent him on an assignment, they will say, wow, wow, what a great privilege for the king. Wow, I'm so representing the king of England. He says, when, permit me to borrow the word of my, of my friend, the great monarch sends you on a missionary trip to Africa. You tell yourself, ah, that one is too hard. What punishment? What sacrifice? Are you following this? And what he was trying to say that you don't understand the honor. If an earthly king will send you and you say, hey, what great honor. But when you hear from God, you say, Kai, what great sacrifice. You see, you, you don't understand that it's more honorable to be sent by the great monarch, the king of kings. For the first time, I began to evaluate myself differently. I realized that you must know who you are and understand why Jesus would say, my meat is not grass, my meat is his will. Because I understand who I am. My identity is drawn from my destiny. I recognize that to this end, notice what he told Herod. He said, to this end, no, uh, Pilate, to this end was I appointed. For this cause came I into the world. He had a perfect understanding. According to the volume of the books, these are the things that have been written of me. I cannot live less than who I am. I'm here to bring salvation to men. Beloved, we are not here for any other reason. Not to catch fun, not to do as we please. We are here with just one agenda, salvation. That's all that is burning in the heart of God. When the new creation was born. You must understand your identity so you don't live less. Because one way the devil is bewitching men is that he is painting a picture about them that is not true. You will only live a life less than what God has for you and think it's enjoyment. Not knowing that your basic problem is that you are seeing yourself like a goat and so you are acting like a goat. Are we still here? We need to start seeing ourselves as gods. And understand that the salvation of men is what is packaged. Beloved, as I began to renew my mind, I understood Romans chapter 12 verse 2. It says that be not conformed to this world, 
But what should happen to you? Be transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind. It doesn't stop there. It says only then would you come to discern that this will of God that you have been resisting is good, is acceptable, it's perfect. Ah, I pray some of us understand this. Some of our young sisters, you will stop thinking of brothers with cars, with AC, with, with house, with DSTV. I start thinking of that sister, that, that brother rather, that is committed to the will of God. When the likes of the, of the missionaries and revivalists that we read of today, when they got married, they slept on the floor for months. No chair, no bed. I read uh, the likes of A.A. Allen, likes of uh, Jaco, I think it was Jaco specifically. So when they got married, their empty house, the fact they even had a house. But these were men that were used mightily. Let the Lord send you to such a brother now. You see how many sisters would be willing to go. Is it not true? Sister wanted to get married. And the only thing she could ask the brother, do you have DSTV? <laughs> of, of what use is it? <laughs> They're laughing. That, that's what we're seeing today. I have nothing. But God has told me that this is the will of God. Can you go with such a brother? Are we still here? It's a function of how you see yourself. That you recognize that from the day I enter his life, he begins to prosper. It's a function of how you see yourself. From the day we begin to walk together, the delights and of, of, of the Lord, the, 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 the heart of the Lord is satisfied. Ah, I read about David and it, it, it shook me. David and his, oh, and his household, the, the household of David, his wife, his children, and everything, they were taken away. Because the, the, the enemy besieged where, where they were at that point in time, invaded the place. And immediately David and his mighty men came back. Because they had gone to war against Israel, but they told them that you should come back. He says, scriptures say, immediately they came back and they saw, ah, what had happened. The men began to weep. He says, and they wept until there was no more strength in them. And they wanted to kill David. They were, they were, they were angry with him that they had lost their wives, their family, everything. Now, this is the question. You are a man of war. You are equipped for battle. They take your children, take your family, take anything. The next command should be, all right, men, strap up your swords and your weapons. We are going to claim our children back and our, and our families. Is it not true? Who will in such a time say, okay, let me go and ask God? What David was saying by that is, if God says, don't go, leave them, let them go, it's of no significance. Because I'm a man after God's heart. Oh, what men. There's something they've seen. There's something they've encountered. There's something they've come to know about themselves. They can't possibly live less than that. I can never eat grass because I'm not a goat. But meat is his will because I'm a servant and I'm his ambassador on the earth. Praise God. Are we still here? For the sake of time, very quickly, I said three things. The next thing, the knowledge of who God is. Willingness is a function of trust. You naturally yield to the one you trust. If you don't know God, you can't trust him. There must be an increase, a growth in the knowledge of God. Men took risk of old because they knew God. They had absolutely no other thing else that was working for them. They just knew God and trusted that God would take care of us. And so they moved. We're having nothing. Some of such men, we, we, we're never heard of again. But, but history documented that at some point, they said they were going to go. Because there was an understanding of God that they had come to. And so they trusted. They were ready to trust God with their lives. They were ready to give their all to him. Because their minds had been renewed. In those days, as a young believer, let me tell you some of the challenges I had. For some reason, I don't understand. I just felt that the day I say, okay, God, I'm going to surrender, that day God will tell me, I'm sending you to Saudi Arabia. That's the mission field I've planned for you. 
I said, no, Saudi Arabia is still good. Maybe it will be Afghanistan, where there's war. And that was just all that was going on in my head. It's the same thoughts that trouble some of us as young men and women. That if you say, okay, God, it is your will, then God will say, you see that brother that has bent leg that walks like this? That's the one you will marry. That's why you have captured one and you've told yourself, God, is this who? You must say yes. <laughs> or else. You know what your basic problem is? You don't know God. As I began to grow and my mind being renewed, I rec recognized that, you see, if you want the best, let God choose for you. Somebody still here? There's a place of trust in God that you get to, that you just relax and you're not bothered. Is it finances? You're going to see endless supply. I don't see any worry. You're going to, you're going to see wealth come into this ministry this year. It's, it's endless supply. Just, just letting God do his work. God takes care of his ministers. God takes care of his projects. Are you following this? Because it's born of God, it, it overcomes all the limitations. It overcomes economy, it overcomes dollar, whatever it is. And you must grow in the knowledge of God. I'm trying to get us somewhere. Because I had to understand that why, why so much restriction? Where is all this coming from? And the last thing this, the Lord said, knowledge I had to have, the knowledge of eternal judgment. You see, there's one thing that you must understand about God's will. Matthew 7, I think verse 20. It says, many will come in that day and say, Lord, Lord, we did mighty things in your name. And Jesus will say, well, depart from me. What, what do you mean by that? For I know you not. He says, not all those who say, Lord, Lord, right, will enter the kingdom of God, but those who do the will of the Father. Why is that important? Because the will of God is God's basis for judgment. Are you still here? The basis for which you are going to be judged is will. Did you do it or did you not do it? But we preached and did mighty things. No, I never sent you to Abuja. I, I sent you somewhere else. Sorry, you wasted your time. You did not do my will. We read those stories of ministers who served God for 30 years. I'll never forget this particular one. And by the 30th year, he was, he, was, he was retiring and wanted to rest. Yet the Lord spoke to him. You have not done my will. I said, wow, 30 years of simply doing ministry but not God's will. He said, you have not even started what I told you to do. It's like the story I heard of Creflo Dollar. He said, the Lord said to him that there's this beautiful suit that he likes. So God told him to give it to a member of his church. So he went to his house. When they told the member to come, stand down, told him, God said I should give you a gift. So he went upstairs, looked at the suit, and lied. I said, man, this suit is sad. No, 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 no. It's too fine. I can't give him. So he took another suit that he felt was also okay, brought it down, and gave it to the guy. I said, uh, this is for you. And the guy was excited, looked at the suit. Wow, pastor, give me a suit. He said, as he was sitting there, the Lord said to him, that is not what I told you to give him. So he said, he went back upstairs in a bid to obey God and I saw another suit. I said, no, no, no. Maybe when it is two suits, God will leave this one. So he carried the other one and gave the guy. And the guy said, ah, pastor, another suit. Ah, he was excited. He said, as he sat down again, he heard the Lord say, you have not done what I told you to do. Go and give him that suit. So he said, he went upstairs, took another. He took four of his suits and gave the guy, hoping that the last one, God will say, hey, since I've given him four. He said, the next thing he heard was, you have not obeyed what I told you to do. So he went back, took that one, and then gave the guy. The guy who left that house with five new suits. <laughs> when I heard that story, I advised myself. <laughs> May you not be empty by the time you eventually obey God. That is singlet and shorts that you have to go and preach because you have given all your suits out. Are you following this? Simple obedience. Understand the revelation of the judgment of God. The judgment of God, all through scriptures, you will realize, is the 
motivating factor for many people. What did Jesus say? He says, for the joy that was set before him. Have you seen that in scriptures? Hebrews chapter 12. What did he do? He says he endured the cross, ignored the shame. What was he looking at? There's a reward. That's what eternal judgment. We've, we've talked about the doctrine of eternal judgment here. Right? If I'm the one that taught you. So if you don't know it, I'm the one that is in trouble. Praise God. At the end of the day, what was God trying to show? That you see, the end, the reward at the end is a motivation. There are many of us who are going to come to that end and nothing to show. You understand why Paul will say things like, I bring my body under. Of what benefit is it that at the end of the day, after all this struggle and there's nothing for me? No. Are you following this? The same thing that drives, you know, and one of the things that the Lord said, you see, you, you, eternal judgment gives, the, gives us a reason to subdue the flesh. Are you following this? Gives us a, a, a good reason to subdue the flesh. That's what Paul was saying. He says, I, I, I bring my body under. When I consider that after all this, I will not be a castaway. You understand why Joseph was that committed to say, I, I cannot do this. With Potiphar's wife. Or was it at the end of the day? He said, no, the call of my destiny is more important. It's ringing in my ears every day. I cannot settle for grass. This is not my end. Right? I'm, I'm more than this. The visions that the Lord has showed me, that there, there, there's something more. I cannot limit myself to this. And when the Lord was done to me, I came back to him and I said that prayer with all my heart. Okay, God. Whatever you will have me do, show me. A few days later, a friend of mine came to me and said, let's go and preach. Where are we going to? He said, eh, there's, a, there's one hostel where court members are plenty. Let's go there. I said, ah, if I have to obey God now, is it court members are going to start with? <laughs> he said, let's go. I said, okay. So we got there. When we got there to the hostel, big, well, not really a big hostel, but all they did was... They, we, we couldn't go from room to room, so he just stood outside and preached. And because people were already outside, so all the guys were already outside. So he now told me that, okay, stay here and be praying and interceding while I'm preaching, so that you know our, our, the ministry can prosper. So I said, Kai, flesh and blood did not reveal that to you, <laughs> because the truth is, no, go and meet those people it was never in my agenda. So I stayed there praying. While he was preaching. Interestingly, when he was preaching, all I was just praying for, oh God, let nobody shoot him. <laughs> let nobody throw life at him. <laughs> Interestingly, these wonderful guys that we felt, nobody should be. After the meeting, they came out and they were thanking us. Thanking the guy. Nobody has ever come here. Asking for a name. Asking for fellowship. I said, eh? Court members. They love Jesus too. They say yes. Whatever you have me do, we left that place. So let's go somewhere else. We went to the girls' hostel this time. And then we did the same thing. We continued like that. The Lord began to stir up compassion in my heart. A strong evangelical ministry was born in that campus. We began to go from hostel to hostel. We began to go from class to class. We began to, we began to see amazing miracles. Just because of a simple act of, okay, God, I'm ready now. Show me what you'll have me do, and I will obey. Are we still here? Yes, and when the Lord was done, oh, goodness, I, I enjoyed ministry on campus. I enjoyed it. It's, it's the kind of thing I wish, wish we could go back to because, you know, town is big. Hostel, you know, campus setting, everybody, you know where everybody is. You know where the sinners are, so you can go and get them. They are gathered in one place. Hmm? But I enjoyed the ministry so much. And I never forgot the things that God taught me. Never forget who you are. Never forget who God is. And never take your eyes away from the end. Are we still here? Yes, and it became the driving force. That every day, I told you the most important word in the Bible is reckon. Reckon ye yourselves, therefore, dead it did unto sin, but alive unto God. Think Romans 6, verse 11. What was God trying to tell us? You see, everything that Jesus has died for to accomplish in your life is to ensure that rebellion never shows up. 
that the will of God will consistently be your delight. You understand why Paul was saying Galatians 6 14? Turn to it very quickly. I think this is the last scripture that we'll see. Praise God. Galatians 6, 6 14. Oh, a new generation is rising. Men with power. Men with understanding. Men with a definite message for this generation. Yeah, it's rising. I told the brethren in church that let's stop complaining and let's start solving the problems because that's the end to which our life has been appointed. Let's start identifying the things that God wants us to do. I say if it means dividing certain, certain uh, in intercessory groups and say, okay, you handle this. Hmm? All the comedians, they need Jesus. People like Mr. Macaroni, they must encounter God. Next six months, we will not rest. We will not hold our peace until this man has an encounter with Jesus. Hope you know it will happen. Exactly. It's a burden that God gives some. But they are, they are, they are looking for Abuja, looking for car, looking for... And, and they don't realize that. You see, it's as simple as letting it forget your personal... It's not you, it's him. That which the Father is doing. That's the end to which you have been appointed. And we take up certain people, one after the other. Take up certain ministries. The Lord will not rest to hold our peace. Right? Until roundabout is sanctified. And all the meal kuku are, are taken out of town. Are you following this? <laughs> and it will happen. Because some of the people who God has given their assignment are seated here today. But the only thing that is tr troubling them is the pornography they will not let go of. The only thing that is troubling them is the sex that they've considered more important. Is the social media and the things of this life that are still pulling them. And God says, if you don't know who you are, the world will keep reducing you to its level. Don't settle for grass when you can settle for his will. Are we still here? Can take up certain responsibility. And so what did Paul say? It says, Galatians 6, 14. As for me, however, I will boast only about the cross. I'm reading from the Good News translation of our Lord Jesus Christ. For by means of the cross, it says the world is dead to me. And I am dead to the world. I think the KJV says that I boast in the cross. Yeah? I glory in the cross. But what, is the Lord, what, what was the Lord saying here? Yeah, God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus, by whom the world is crucified unto me and now unto the world. The good news says I'm dead to the world and the world is dead to me. What makes this possible? It says it's the cross. That was the whole essence of redemption. A breed of men that no longer have a, an agenda of, the, of their own. A breed of men who have died to the world. And the world has died to them. They are, not, they are not seeking for earthly pleasure. But they are seeking only for one thing. God's will. In my day, when a Christian is doing a birthday party, it's a crusade. It's heartbreaking. You go to some Christian parties today, and you're hearing, there's one song that Reverend K is always sing, singing. I've never heard it. You know, show me your waist or something like that. <laughs> I say, I've never heard that song. It's, it's from him. I'm learning all those things. <laughs> Are you approaching a Christian? It was never heard of. I'll never forget a sister on campus. When you hear she's having a bad day, wherever we are, we find a way to be there. If you've never moved in the gifts of the Spirit, you will manifest one gift in that place. That was how powerful her birthdays were. People looked forward to it every year. 100 level, 200 level, 300. People who you know are hardened sinners, bring them to that birthday. They will get saved. She will spend days locked up. Says she actually used to lock herself in her wardrobe. Right? Closet. And actually pray for days. And people will show up in that place and you see a tangible manifestation of God's presence. That's, that's, that's how Christians live. Every opportunity to serve the master. Every opportunity to, to live out that which has been written of us in the volume of the books. We went for Christian weddings, same thing. Christians are getting married, and, and oh goodness. Opportunity 
to get someone saved. A family member will get saved. Some, you know, we, we saw every opportunity to do his will. There's witchcraft in this generation, my brethren. It's designed to awaken rebellion. We have people who have so settled for their will that it has become the way they live. That's, that's the first thing God said is going to break tonight. Strongholds are going to be taken out. Are you following this? And it's real because I, I, I had a pet. If I that's the second experience, I wanted to tell you. For a long time, after I had struggled, struggled, the Lord said to me very clearly there's a spirit of rebellion that has attached itself to you. Because for some season, God was telling me to fast. It was so hard to fast. By 12 o'clock, I'm running to go and break. It's strange. I'm sure some of you have experienced that. Have there any people who experienced? Yeah. You can fast though. You can go till evening. Go. But that period, 12 o'clock. And the Lord said these words I never forgot. It challenged me. He said the spirit of rebellion has attached itself to you. And that's the reason why it's hard for you to fast. If you want to, be, if you want to fast successfully now, you have to break yourself free from it. Right there, I didn't wait for anybody to tell me. I just lay on the floor in my room. The loudest tongues I've ever spoken in my life for the next one hour. I could never imagine how a believer can be held captive by a spirit of rebellion. Beloved, when I was done after that one hour, I stood up. It's as if a heavy weight had been taken off me. There was a a burden in my heart to fast. If I know just to fast, to do anything that God wants me. And the Lord said, this is your default setting. Stand fast in it. This is true liberty. Don't get so attached with the world. Beloved, every time you're on social media, you are, you are toying with your liberty. Because there are spirits of rebellion that are out to ensure that they ensnare you. And take out that vision. Some of you had great visions of outreach, great visions of, of service, or great, great missions. Some of us here sit there are missionaries, intercessors. But you see, those things have been corrupted by the things you are fellowshipping with. Are we still here? The Lord said to me, that their, their, their spirit, their, their, their activities of rebellion that we're going to need to address tonight. Praise God. I will do your will, O oh God. Show me what you will have me do, and I will obey. Is it a very simple thing? And it begins with that heart posture. And before you know it, the Lord begins to usher you into new dimensions. There's a shift in your heart. That burden that you hear Reverend Kerr is always talking about takes hold of you. And begins to drive you. And begins to drive you. I love the outreaches that people are doing on campus. It's going to get in, more intensified. Uh, because there's a call for such things. And I'm glad that ROC and Worries is taking heed to that call. But it's going to intensify. It's going to spread outside this country. Uh, very soon we'll be sending men to African countries for missionary work. And those men are seated here. The issue is, are you ready to begin to prepare your heart for this work? Are you ready to begin to prepare your mind? Are you ready to begin to condition yourself? God needs men. But it's not every man he can trust. There has to be a work in you. So who will he send? Those he can trust. Those who are, he has perfected in an understanding of who they are. Because such men will stand their ground like Joseph when they are faced with temptation. God has been so disappointed that men are the slightest sign of enjoyment. They lose it. I was told of a ministry that this guy prayed for years. Oh God, expand my ministry, expand. And nothing happened. Until one day, God decided to test him and give him some degree of success. Ministry expanded. They got land. God's building. God, and, and everything. Few months after all that, Police came one day to arrest pastor. Why? Sleeping with an underage member of his church. Are you following this? 
I said, by the time he was suffering, somebody would think that God has abandoned him. Are you following this? He not realize that God was just keeping him where he's safe. <laughs> May you not be a casualty because you have not prepared effectively for where God is taking this work. Is somebody still here? My time is almost up and I think we need to pray. Let the glory of the Lord invade our hearts again. Let that workings of the Holy Spirit be reactivated. Let men begin to reconnect and hear the cry of destiny. Like a mother awakens and goes to his child, may men reconnect with their prophetic destinies today. Begin to pray to the Lord right now. Let's take the next five minutes. Take the next five minutes. I still have like five minutes. And let's cry out to the master. Some of you have been eating grass. It's time to tell the Lord. I'm not settling for that which is beneath me. It's an honor to do God's bidding. Our city is crying out for intercessors right now. Our nation is crying out for intercessors. Our government needs men. Men with a specific assignment. And in case you do not know that there are such men, that their assignment is the political class, those in leadership, to intercede, not just intercede, but there is a grace upon them to minister to people in the place of power. In case you do not know, those men need Jesus too. The gifts of the Spirit, oh, we didn't have time for that are going to be strongly awakened again in the church. But it begins with a decision. Lord, your will. I can't settle for anything less. I can't settle for a life beneath the life that you've called me onto. Thank you. I, I just can't. I just can't. I just can't. And so let the workings of the Holy Spirit be strongly intensified in this house. Be strongly intensified in this house. There are sisters who need to let go of their pride and let go of their agenda. There are brothers who need to put an end to the plans and the things that they've told themselves. And tonight, let only one prayer cry out from your heart. Okay, God, what you have said, I'm ready to obey now. Just show me. Just show me. There are men that God is going to call that will hold your hand. I say, let's go. Because it's time. It's time. I see the doors opening. It's time, RCN, to take your rightful place. It's beyond the city. It's time. It's time. There are locations that are looking for what you have. It's time. It's time to stop looking down on yourself and stop settling. A generation of men are rising here that are going to consider holiness the greatest priority. The days have come. We will no longer be gathering to pray for people who are struggling with addictions. The day has come. We have strong goals will no longer be an issue. When we gather, it will be with the intention of firing up ourselves because we're ready to go out again. We are asking God, show us the next field. We are saying, God, show us the next place. Because there's a strong anointing in this house. Beloved, key into it. Key into it. Key into it. This is not the time to begin to struggle with your own agenda. It's not the time to begin to, to, to settle for the things of this world. This is the time to tell yourself, I cannot live beneath my prophetic destiny, my redemptive right. I cannot be what God has not called me to be. I am not a goat. 
I saw porn addiction. Tell it to leave you now. The influences that have been battling, fighting against your destiny, strong goals of rebellion, break yourself free from it now. So do your will, O oh God, as is written of me in the volume of the books. I know there are mighty men that God is raising in this house. But specifically, God is alighting evangelists. Evangelists. There are men with a strong prophetic grace in this house. I know that. Strong prophetic grace for intercession. Strong utterances. But the Lord is alighting men with a strong evangelical ministry. Open up your hearts and say, God, here I am. Use me. Use me. You have toiled all night and got nothing. At this crossroad, it's time to let go and say, God, I'm ready to obey. I'm ready to trust you. I'm ready to rest in your will. I see the oil of God coming upon hands of men. There is a strong anointing in this house today. Men are being consecrated unto ministry. Men are being consecrated unto specific assignments. For some of you, God is saying, go back to your family and begin your ministry there. There are strong goals and satanic covenants that God wants to use you to break in that family. Go and start your work there. The anointing of God is working. Working. Gifts are being stirred up again. The anointing of the Holy Ghost is like a dam busting forth in this house. So walk in the anointing will no longer be a struggle for you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Lebradoboto Sata. Thank you, Holy Ghost. We shall see beyond. Lebrado Sata. Yekaka. Yebrede. That which our senses have been showing us. I see the Lord opening eyes. I see the revelation of the Spirit. That which the Father is doing. That which the Father is doing. The Lord is bringing order, simplicity, structure. You will hear, you will see, and you will align. Ya Kasata, reketeke, kasata tata, reketa tolo lobosha. Es 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 preto todo lo lo preto riere. Es rekete de 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 de. Es rekete de 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 de. Es rekete ta to to so to lo riere. Rekato to satata. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is provoking this house. Mm. The Lord is provoking this house. The things to come are going to push you to pray. Hmm. 
the things to come there is a realm of consecration that God has been longing to bring this house into you will enter in the seasons to come because I hear the Lord say the peninas are rising the peninas are multiplying your influence on social media is strong and it will get stronger but the opposition will also come but fear not it will push this house to a place of consecration that God has always wanted it to be because the Samuels, the prophets are coming from this house and they are going to be sent to the nations but giving birth to a new order of the prophetic in this house it's happening it's happening it's happening Maro Soto Sata Yeredesh You are, a, you are a sister in this house. You are, you are a special breed. The Lord has given stature to our sisters. You are going to think differently. People are going to be in wonder. That Arosian sisters, they, they, don't, they don't function like other sisters. They seem to have a separate and different, different spirit. Their delight is not in this realm. I will follow in this. Yeah. Because ah, the marriages are going to take place this year. And it's not just going to be a marriage. It's going to be like Acts chapter 13. It's going to be like separating Paul and Barnabas. But this time, husband and wife. Because as the union is taking place, it is not a marriage according to the order of the flesh, but according to the order of the prophetic. It is a marriage that connects with destiny immediately. And the Lord is going to be sending men, man of God. Men are going to be coming from this house. They're going to be going far and near. We'll be going far and near. I see oil flowing. Endless. 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 It will never go dry. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Let me do one thing very quickly before I take my seat. And the Lord has just told me that that's the main thing why he brought me here. I don't know where this opposition has been coming from. Right? But one thing the Lord has told me to do now is to put an end to it. I don't know what form of limitation or opposition has been coming against this house. But it ends from today. Whatever witchcraft manipulation... By the authority and the position you've placed me in right now, I address you, foul spirit. You desist from your manoeuvres and you cease to oppress my brother and his household and the work that he's doing in this place. In the name of Jesus. From this time forth, the crooked ways are made straight. The mountains are brought low. And the grace and the favors of God will abound towards this house. You will not need to struggle. You will not need to ask. Men will come and say, the Lord sent us to come and do this and this for you. Intercessors will rise up from places far that you cannot even imagine. With a specific assignment, we will not rest until the mandate of this house is fulfilled. I hear the Spirit of the Lord say, fear not, my brother. The Lord has raised men with you. The Lord has given you good men that will stand with you. Yes, some will betray you, but fear not. Others will rise. Others will rise. You have brothers. You have sisters. You have people from far and near that will continually hold your hand up like Aaron and Hor. And in your day of weariness, fear not. For the Lord will give you help and this work will prosper in your hands. The purposes of the Lord will stand and the counsel of the wicked one will be brought to naught. For the Lord stands to frustrate the tokens of liars, to make the finest mad, to put to naught the counsel of the ungodly. The things that men have said about you will not stand. 
they will be shamed right in their faces for the Lord is raising up your hand just like he did to Joshua and he said before the midst of the people I will begin to raise you Joshua and I will show you that as I was with Moses so I am with you the Lord will begin to prove himself in a mighty way and all those that have opposed you will be put to shame in the name of Jesus lift your hands and give him praise hallelujah wherever you are tonight there is a prayer boarding that I drew from my brother's teaching that I sense that the Lord will have us press on for two three minutes when I heard it my heart skipped he said may you not be empty at the point where you decide you want to do the will of God is the sorry state of many Christians by the time they decide that they want to yield to the will of God they are empty empty they can't contribute much anymore they are not useful anymore it now looks as if they are just doing the will of God in name only the kingdom does not get any profit take two minutes beg God May I not be empty before I choose to do your will. Beg him. Beg him now. Beg him. Hmm. Now that I still have strength. Now that I can still move around. Now that I can still make certain choices. Make me obsessed with your will. I beg you to pray. I heard it. My heart skipped. Let it not be that it is when I have become a non-entity. I have become empty. Ole makabele kruzinaya. Shabele moke birata. Let it not be that it is on your deathbed. That you are now saying, oh God. I wish somebody on site and online we pray. Don't let me be empty before I choose your way. Don't let me be naked before I decide to follow your will. Don't let me be broken and crippled and empty before I submit to your leading. Oh God!
Find me, oh, find me, Lord. Find me, oh, find me, Lord. Find me, then make me true, oh, God. I lay down all that I know. in mercy may we not be empty before we decide to do the right thing before we decide to yield before we decide to obey we pray oh God for your servant and his wife continue to strengthen them you have raised them for such a time as this every resource that they need to make a full proof of what it is you have committed into their hands. Let those resources be channeled in their direction now. Spiritual, physical, human, financial. Let it be channeled in rich abundance such that that which you have committed into their hands will continue to thrive. Bless Heritage Assembly. Bless their children. Bless the work you have put in their hands. Thank you, awesome God. In Jesus' awesome name, we have prayed.